Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to Bag Only, the inventory only Ultimate Iron Man. Not using any inventory enhancing containers, not using any stash units, not using any POH storage, none of that. It's been a couple of days, and I've been grinding for you. Uh, in the words of Bryson Tiller, I'm back and I'm so much better. Check these stats out. Boom. What the hell? 30 crafting? What have you been doing? So I've been doing just a whole bunch of uh, fletching since the last episode. Started at Oaks, moved to Willows, sold a lot of just unstrungs over to the shopkeeper just right here, Arhine. As you progress through the trees, um, cutting logs really slows down with just a steel axe. I think anything over oak trees, you really want a better axe. So I spent a good few hours running to this house here. I'd bring a full inventory of flax over here, make a full invent of bowstrings, drop like four or five on the ground, chop four or five maple logs into the empty invent space that we just made, fletch them into strong bows, then pick the bowstrings back up, just keep juggling it until we had a full invent of strong bows. And then what we'd do is we'd run all the way back to the homie Arhine uh, over at the dock and sell them and just rinse repeat. I've powered all the way from whatever we were before, 29 woodcutting to 60. Um, just with this steel axe, it was very slow in parts, just a few thousand XP an hour sometimes. And obviously you can see our fletching's gone all the way from like 20, I think it was 23 or 25 at the very end of last episode, um, and now we're all the way up to 56, uh, which is crazy. So we've got all this free progress, we've got a massive cash stack, for where we are in the game at least, of 100,000. Um, got some random mime trousers on, just because of a random event. Got a diamond ring on, because like I say, we're balling these days. Um, no, that was just from a random bird nest from Cutting Trees. Um, we've got two clues from nests, um, made some headless arrows, because we got feathers from a maze random, and we've still got the chaos runes from our last maze random. Crafting, we could do bowstring before. Could make every kind of sapphire jewellery, actually quite a lot of the emerald jewellery it looks like, so that's really cool. Now, as far as I'm aware, we need a crafting level for Lost City, uh, which of course is the Xanaris quest that you have to do before doing Fairy Tale. Yeah, so we do need 31 crafting, 36 woodcutting. Uh, we're only 1200 crafting XP away from being able to do that. But we can do the murder mystery quest which takes place just up the road here. Um, it needs 16 free invent slots or something like that. Obviously we have those right now, so it's a perfect time to go do it. Doesn't need any other items. And it happens to reward you with 1400 crafting XP. Uh, and then we'll have the crafting level we need to do Lost City, so we might go do that straight after. Uh, while we're running up, I'll just have a look at the woodcutting guide. With our 60 woodcutting, we can now make every kind of canoe, the highest one being level 57. So that does mean when we home teleport back to Lumbridge, as we always do. Um, but now we can also sail all the way up to Edgeville if we need to, so if we need to get to the Wildy or into Edgeville Dungeon. And then we can sail up to the new Ferox Enclave without having a jewel ring or a Clan Wars cooldown. So someone's been murdered, and it's one of many people in this house. I think it's different each time you do the quest, but obviously as ever with quest helper it'll just tell us who it is based on the items we find, so we don't really need to do any sleuthing. So we're going to grab a few items from the crime scene, search through their personal belongings, just see if they have any alibis or anything to show that they weren't the murderer. Oh, we need a pot. Oh, whoops. One trip to our home later. So we just cross check our fingerprints real quick. Talk to this gossip guy outside, see if he's witnessed anything. And it seems like the murder weapon is poison, so we run down to the store down here. And he tells us he sold poison to everyone in the household, so that doesn't help us at all. So if we just glance in chat, we can see that the fingerprints from the killer are an exact match to Anna's. Okay, Anna, start talking. And she claims to have bought poison in order to kill some spiders in the compost heap. Probably not true, because that sounds like a straight up lie who would do that. So we check the compost. Absolutely full of maggots and bugs. No one's used poison on this. So we just talk to the police right outside and go, hey, here's a whole bunch of evidence that it was this woman. And he's like, damn, should have thought that myself. Thanks for your help. <laughs> crafting XP, 2000 coins, 31 crafting. Yes. Uh, what we will do next, real quick, gonna head to Burthorpe Games Room Telly. Uh, we're just gonna run by the Slayer guy who's up there and just pick up a fresh Slayer task. And our task is to kill 47 wolves, which is interesting. So the plan now, now we've technically got all the skills we need to complete the Lost City quest. Um, it's just Lumbridge Home Telly, as ever. Uh, and then we're going to take our canoe up to Varrock, head to the rune store. Now, you are allowed to take runes with you onto Intrano, even though you're not allowed to take armor or weapons, which is what we're going to use to kill the quest boss for Lost City. I imagine we may need to once again drop our boots, maybe our gloves, probably our Ardy cape, just on the floor before we head to Intrano. They'll almost definitely despawn. Uh, it'd be nice to make these headless arrows, but honestly, we've got like 50 odd fletching now, so I don't think making bronze arrows is really competitive anymore, so we'll just ditch them. Just head to Aubrey, grab those air and water runes, and then we'll grab. I guess the only food we can really pick up is an inventory of teas while we're here without going all the way to Ardy for cakes, so let's just buy two packs and two packs. As far as I'm aware, it's one to one. Yeah, okay. Oh, speaking of food. 
Excellent, I think a kebab's probably better than a tea. So we'll just yoink ourselves an inventory of teas to take with us to Entrana. Kill a few zombies down in a dungeon inside, one of them will drop an axe. Then we can use that to chop a tree. And then the tree spirit boss of the quest will come to life, we'll run behind a branch. Hopefully we won't die like we did with the demon the other day, and we'll just donk him out with some water spells. Now I'm really hoping the Draman branch doesn't count as a weapon, in terms of going on to Intrana again, because we will need to go back multiple times. And that does mean every time we need to go back to Intrana we'll have to ditch our staff and get a new one on Intrana, all the way until we complete Lunar Diplomacy and we can get the Lunar Staff, which kind of takes its place and is reclaimable for coins. Uh, the reason we've still got these two clue scrolls is because I thought they were potentially completable steps, so maybe we'll look at those later in the episode, um, we're just hanging on to them for now. So we'll just scoot here to Champions Guild, see if we can canoe backwards. Okay, so canoes do work backwards, that's good. The only items we do need are a knife and an axe, got both of those, and then the rest is just food and combat runes. Okay, let's start Lost City. Somewhere there's a leprechaun on the loose. No idea where he could possibly be. So chop this tree. Good old Seamus pops out. He's like, dude, why are you chopping my tree? He's just walking off. Come back. Why are you running? Why are you running? There we go. So, where's the lost city, dude? He says, oh, it's in the shed down there. But you can't get to it without a magic stick. And the magic stick only grows on the island of Intrana. An island you're not allowed to visit with any weapons or armor on you because the pacifist monks that live there just don't want that kind of vibe, you know? And we gotta respect that. Now, having access to Xenaris does unlock a couple of things after this quest. We can go to Implings, we can make cosmic runes, we can get Slayer tasks from down there, yada yada yada. Really, the main reason you do this is because it's a prerequisite to the fairy tale quests, which unlock the fairy rings to teleport around with, um, which are gonna be just, just everything um, for us to get around. So let's go talk to this homie. He'll be like, bro, stop trying to bring stuff on our boat. So I'm thinking we'll probably have to, we definitely need to get rid of the axe. Uh, let's see if he lets us on with our arty cloak. Nope. Boots of Lightness. Yeah, the Boots of Lightness don't count as armor, so that's good. We don't have to go reclaim those. Uh, we will have to go get our cape back, but obviously it's just a case of walking back to Two Pints and asking for our, like, fourth cape. <laughs> so here it is. The Holy Island of Intrana. A couple more quests take place on here. Mainly the Enlightened Journey quest. Uh, Heroes quest, you have to come here to steal a feather from a bird. Um, I think for those quests you don't spend quite as long on the island, so you can probably get back before your stuff despawns. Um, but obviously there's always the looming possibility that another player could come along and yoink things, so. So we come here up the cave monk, go into his cave. He'd be like, bro, it's a dangerous cave. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a dangerous gal. Uh, so now he's killed these undead lumberjacks. Uh, I guess from behind these mushrooms we should be able to donk him. If that is the case, that's really good, because what we don't want right now is melee combat. This looks like a good spot. Not sure what the drop rate is for the axe, it's definitely not guaranteed, um, so maybe we'll have to kill a couple of these. Once again, I only brought 100 casts, so we might have a fighter in a situation here where we come quite close to not being able to complete it with the supplies we brought. Bronze med helm, not exactly what we were looking for. Any luck? Nope, fishing bait. Bronze axe, let's go. <laughs> Um, so we just take this bronze axe, chop down a tree. Supposedly, if you stand just here, tree spirit should line up nicely. So far, so good. And with that, the tree spirit's dead. Got another magic level, now 27. So we can enchant emerald and jade jewelry, should we ever need to. Um, so what we're gonna do, use our bronze axe, chop a few of these dreaming branches, cause you need a couple. Uh, potentially hang on to one, just for the Fremenic Isles. Uh, now we need to teleport out. 10 minutes till we can teleport to Lumbridge. Okay, what we'll do, we'll teleport to Clan Wars. I'll use the Clan Wars pool, the juice, whatever it's called. Fills our stats back up. Then what we can do, chop a canoe down, and we should be able to take this all the way back down to Lumbridge. We'll fletch one of these branches into the uh, Draman Staff, and then we'll just wander into the secret shed in Lumbridge Swamp um, and access the Lost City. And in doing so, I think that just completes the quest. Speaking of transport, I think as soon as we've done this quest, we'll just leave, because uh, we'll be really close to Draenor. Uh, we'll head to the marketplace and we'll grab a Chronicle teleport book, and uh, each charge lets you teleport just outside Varrock. So we'll grab a bunch of charges with our large cash stack, um, and then next time we need to go to Varrock, we won't need to be reliant on the home telly and the canoe method. We should be able to just teleport kind of close using our new book. So as you can see, if you enter the shed normally, nothing happens. No secret city. However, if we use a knife on one of these branches and we equip it, then we walk through the door. Magic happens. And there we are, Lost City. 
No real rewards, uh, no cash, no XP, just some quest points and access to Xanaris. Like I said, there's a couple of things we can do here, but I'm just going to use this fairy ring to leave the same way we came in. Okay, now we're in Draenor. We just head to Diango. It's going to drop a couple of teas real quick just to make this process a little quicker. So we'll buy the Chronicle. That costs us 300. And then each charge is 150. So that's less than I thought. That should be enough. I don't see us needing more than 24 for a long time. And obviously the good thing about this book is it is wieldable. Won't be taking an invent space. Can just be held in our offhand as long as we don't have a shield or anything that we need to equip. Next stop in being able to travel around. We're just going to scoot back over to Ardy and just get her Ardy cape back now. Oh yeah, and on the way past Port Serim. Gotta cop the Black Wizard hat back. Just before we get to the boat to Ardy, I'm just going to check out this crafting shop here. Uh, in Remington. Yeah, okay, so we'll just grab ourselves a tiara mold on the way. Um, got a little bit of a plan. I'm going to attempt to do this first step of this easy clue. Uh, what we need to do is bring a pink skirt, a pink robe top, and a body tiara to the Grand Exchange. Obviously, we're not going to be able to build this stash unit in future. I believe the pink robes are available up at the Grand Tree at that magic store we used in the other episode. The tiara we'll have to make ourselves. We can get a body talisman from killing guards uh, quite commonly. So we should be able to use that save spot method in Varrock we did in the other episode. Just want to check before I steal anything here whether I can trade the silver stall guy. Cool, I can buy a bar, 150. On the way to pick our Ardy cloak up, there is actually a furnace just right here. Uh, so real quick, make this tiara. Drop the mold, don't need it. Pop our tiara on, look like a fabulous little princess. Um, and then sadly ditch our wizard hat. So here we are, back at the pub. Back to the absolute angel two pints. Okay, we're looking a little bit less scuffed now. So once we've grabbed the robes, we'll head over to Varrock. Uh, need to be over there for this grand exchange clue. Um, and that is also where we'll kill some guards. Try and get that body talisman as a drop. Um, if only part of the pink robe's here, then we'll grab the other half from the clothes shop in Varrock. Uh, so it's robe top. It says pink skirt. I don't know if robe bottoms are the pink skirt. For the sake of argument, we'll buy both while we're here. And yes, I forgot we could use our Chronicle already. So used to doing this method to getting back to Varrock, but now we're already here, then I guess I'll just save the charge. So you may be asking, why are we doing an easy clue? What exactly is the point? And that's a very good question. The point is, I just want to see if we can do one at this point in the account. It's super early, so probably not. So just to dip our toe in the water for clues right now, we're going to have a go at doing this one. So back into the Varrock clothing store. Obviously we came here yonks ago to get the priest outfit for Plague City or Biohazard, whichever one it was. There's the pink skirt we need. Uh, I think while we are here we will pick up some kind of magic staff. So let's just check. We've basically got unlimited airs. Uh, we need 140 waters total. So we'll just buy a pack of 100. So once we've gone through our water bolts, used all our chaos runes up, then we can go back to good old trusty fire strike. So not sure how long we'll be killing guards for to get this body talisman drop. But either way, it's it's training, you know? Whenever we hit a roadblock where we have to maybe potentially lose items or definitely lose items, um, then it's important to have progress in areas that we can't lose, like quest rewards, XP rewards, and diary unlocks. Um, so spending money on XP, absolutely fine thing to do. But we'll just use our good chaos runes on normal magic XP for now. Stay here just until we get that talisman. I think it's something like 1 in 40 or something. I think I looked up before. Right, there we go. Um, I think I killed something like 15 guards. Got ourselves a body talisman. Um, so what we'll real quick do while we're already here, run over to the body altar. It's only across this bridge here, just next to Barbarian Village. And we'll attempt to combine this talisman with the silver tiara we made. I'm hoping it'll work. Like I say, it is 20 runecraft to make body runes. So if we had to get 20 runecraft to make a body tiara, that would make perfect sense. Oh cool, it worked. Awesome, so we do have a body tiara now. Not sure how long we'll hang on to that for, but as you can see in the emote clue thing at the top left, we do have all three items required for this first step. Right, here we are, the Grand Exchange. Somewhere that we'd normally have very little interest in coming. Um, can't trade, obviously, on this account. So easy clues are two to four steps. So yeah, it was a two-step clue, which is the minimum, which is absolutely crazy. We've done our first clue on this account. Let's, uh, let's crack it open. Wow. That really is sad. <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, seven nature runes, we can do seven low alchemies. And the sweets, I mean, it's... Okay, so after that disappointing clue, I think what we'll do next, we'll do the Daddy's Home mini quest, which is the introduction to construction. Grab the saw that's in this shop where the quest starts. Drop all this trash. 
Uh, so let's talk to Marlo. We'll just start Daddy's home. Um, and then as it asks us for things, we'll just go get them. Uh, we do need 10 planks, but the sawmill's just right outside the town, up the road. Uh, I believe the sawmill also sells the nails that we'll need and the bolts of cloth that we'll need. This guy actually has some logs in his house, which is kind of weird. So we'll just grab two. Let's make our wood cutting 10 planks thing a little bit quicker. Remove all this trash old furniture. We'll replace this with some trash new furniture. <laughs> just grab a hammer from the shop as we were just talking about. Oh yeah, while well, we're here to sell these natures. So we'll just head up to the sawmill. We'll grab a few regular logs on the way. Uh, just buy ourselves 10 normal planks. I don't know, 100 iron nails. It says you need 14, but let's just buy 100. And we need five bolts of cloth. Exactly enough quest item space. Uh, we do need to come back here to make some special logs a bit later. Uh, but for now, we'll just dash back down to the dude's house, turn all this garbage in. I think what we'll do, <laughs> just so I want the invent space back, is I'll just eat these purple sweets now. And they are worth 10 run energy each. Just scoff that pile and then we've got ourselves enough run to get back to the quest. Right, so we build this guy a bunch of garbage. It will give us some nice construction XP because obviously we're starting this out with 5 or something construction. Just hit 6. Um, so I'll probably get a couple of levels off doing this, plus whatever you get at the very end as the reward. Uh, and then he will require a special order for his bed. Uh, we need to take some special logs up to the sawmill again. Uh, in regards to our own player own house, I've not put too much thought into how we're going to train that quite yet, but really not fussed at this point. The first major thing I'd probably want is level 50 for the portal rooms. Um, but aside from that, there's not really a lot. All the really helpful things are at a super high level in like the 70s and 80s to make your jewelry boxes, your portal nexuses, things like that. Maybe somewhere down the line we'll find something that drops noted planks and we can stack some of those up. Um, but for now, not really thinking about it too much. Talk to old man, whatever, whatever. And then we go back to the first NPC who gave us the quest and we're done. I think for this we get some kind of crate full of construction supplies. Just give him a nudge and say, hey dude, we've done your quest. There we go. 11 construction for that. Do we want to drop the med clue? Yeah, we do. We don't need it. Whatever. Um, so what I am really quickly going to do, get a full inventory of logs. We'll go back up to the sawmill, turn all those into planks. We'll use one of these house tellies and go to our house. Just build whatever we can with the planks. Hop outside. There'll be an NPC where we can unnote things for a few coins. We'll unnote all this quest reward garbage. Turn it all into something in the house. Um, just to use it all up and get all the XP we can from it. And then we're not carrying it all around. Here we are, home sweet home. Not sure if we've been in here before. But the way construction works is whatever you build, it's the same amount of XP per material. So really it doesn't matter what we make. Uh, so we'll just make some chairs. There we go, that's the first lot of planks. Now if we run outside, if we show files a banknote for a small payment, you can turn that banknote into stuff. This is the easiest way to level construction early. Sounds easy, but the real problem on this account is acquiring noted building materials. To do training like this, you'd have to find something that drops noted planks and stack them up quite high. I think the steel bars are used for things in the kitchen, so what we will do, we'll just make ourselves a kitchen. Guess we can make a bunch of different rooms and just see if there's anything in them we can make with oak. So we'll just craft rooms that we would have made anyway. Like the workshop, always a good room to have. Later in the game, obviously, you can come here and uh, repair all your armor, uh, your barrows gear, things like that. can make these tool stores. If we ever need saw hammer chisel or shears, we can come to our house and just grab one for free. Obviously, don't consider this a bank. Perfectly usable on the account. We're not putting shears in there to get back out later. It just generates unlimited shears or whatever, so absolutely happy to use that. Build ourselves a sink. Now we can get water in our house. Just looking for things we can make with oak, so that's good. So we'll go in, we'll just turn these cloths into rugs. Guess we'll just keep that there because it looks kind of nice. Uh, so that's that. Uh, decent mini quest. It cost us a little bit of money. We're down to 71,000 now. Uh, so we got ourselves 17 construction. Nice place to start with. Oh, got ourselves an exam. Genuinely the best uh, random event you can get. Um, this one gives you the most XP. Just like that. It's like a 10 second event. Question is, what do we want to put a book of experience into? <laughs> Uh, gonna chuck some XP on smithing because it is 29. That'll put us super close to 30, which obviously unlocks steel. What I'm thinking is while we're down this area of the map, what we might do is do the Corsair Curse quest. Maybe we'll train some mage there on some ogres or something afterwards, just as a nice place to AFK. And obviously the magic shop's right here next to us, so if we need to stock up on more runes to do this. Oh, I'm sorry. My character looks stupid. I've uh, I've got this plug-in on that replaces what it looks like you're wearing just for thumbnails, my bad. Whoops. <laughs> so this is what we actually look like. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll get the classic wizard hat back because, you know, we'll, we'll be doing magic damage. We'll just drop the tiara. Just three. <clears throat> so that looks about right. Oh, actually, what does the jewelry shop guy sell? Uh, we will sell this diamond ring to the dude because that will only go into a ring of life and we've no need for a ring of life. So 2.2k that we just grabbed there. 
Uh, I know I said we were going to go do Taurus Trap, but uh, I feel like our health is a little bit low to do that. We have to kill the Guard Captain to get into the Desert Mining Camp. Uh, it would be nice just to have a few levels before we go do that, just because it'll make the whole process a lot easier. So we'll clear this Pirate Curse, do this quest, use up all our runes just maging the Ogres, uh, just in the cavern that you unlock once you've done this quest. Like a lot of quests in the game, I think this one is just a lot of walking between people and talking to them, so... So one of the rewards from doing this quest is uh, you actually unlock a bank over here. Um, obviously we can't use banks, so that doesn't do too much for us. Uh, but yeah, we're primarily doing this for the uh, the training spot. And just because we want to get all the quests done on this account, you know, I feel like that's a nice goal. I have been thinking a little bit about the long-term uh, goal of this account. I do think quest cape is probably a good end game goal. Um, I think ultimately there'll be a lot of challenges, not only in just completing the quest, but getting all the skill requirements to do the quest. Obviously you need a lot of skills to like 70, um, some a little bit higher. So finding methods to train all our skills with just, well, really less than 28 inventory spaces that we can use and no banks should be an interesting challenge. Um, and that's not even thinking about the quests that have genuinely hard bosses that you have to kill. Um, the one that's sort of floating through my mind the most is the Saren boss um, to unlock Prif. I remember doing that on a main with like almost max gear and a full invent of brews and restores and it was still really difficult and took me quite a number of tries. The logistics of getting that level of gear on an account like this with the potential of losing it and needing to get all those supplies <laughs> should be quite a challenge. But right now we're doing quite a lot of comfy early game quests that aren't too difficult. If you want to play a fun little game as you go, just count the amount of times I say quest in these episodes. <laughs> Here we go, Ithoi the Navigator. Turns out he's faked to this curse, there's not really a curse. He's just been running around, fooling with people. So yeah, hopefully um, we can defeat him with just Fire Strike and three onions and two cooked meat. He does have 55 health it looks like. Um, I think technically we can hit eights with this spell. It seems like they were not really hitting very well at all. I mean the dude's kind of fighting back, so we'll just step to the side, eat our provisions. Just gotta hope we hit seven before he hits eight on us. Flash, flash, flash. Oh, come on. Okay. Guys, I'm... <sighs> Look, Pib. I think this guy's a lost cause. I'm genuinely... Let's just have a private talk now, you and me. I'm genuinely so sorry. I know I'm better at the game. I'm clearly better at the game. I died... I don't think anyone's ever died to Corsair Curse. What is happening to me? Unbelievable. Okay, back we go. Yeah, there's our loot pile. Strangely, it's actually put it on the ground floor. I guess it was an instance and they've just moved our items down here, so that's nice. There we go. It's like nothing happened. So what I will do is I'll real quick just go upstairs in this kind of uh, eatery and just hop worlds, grab the cooked meat spawns here. So we know he can hit a six. So let's just eat if we go anywhere near six. Just eat up again. Watch out, watch out, watch out! Right, there we go. Our toughest quest boss yet. <laughs> Defeated. What I might do is just really quick see if they have any emergency food for sale, like a pineapple or something. Just in case we mess up while fighting the ogres. So at the end of that quest we do have almost 200 casts of our fire strike on us. So what we'll do is we'll just literally stand kinda here and I'll just mage them. And even if we don't hit super consistently we will get a little bit of splashing XP. So at the very least we should get, you know, 2000 XP if we do no damage from this amount of runes. Oh, no way. Uh, right guys, uh, we're back. We just used about 240 casts or something. I'm not gonna lie to you, we managed to kill two. I thought for some reason this was a really good place to train mage. Turns out it's not. <laughs> These guys have quite high defense. However, like I did say, um, we did get two, well, one and a bit mage levels, so we're now 31. So now we do have the Varrock and the Lumbridge Tele spells, which is really, really good. What we do actually need still is to train our combat, so while we are here, Let's stock up a little more on these rune packs. Uh, I'm just going to nip down into Drain or Sewer and kill one zombie. Just because it's a diary task and we are literally passing the manhole, so. Uh, then what I'm going to do is we're going to relocate over to uh, the big frogs just south of Lumbridge. We're going to try and find a safe spot for those and just kill them with mage. Get some level ups. Oh no, it's just hit me. <laughs> Since we died again. Uh, we lost our Chronicle, our Draenor teleport book. It's good job I noticed because we are just in Draenor here, uh, but we do just want the Chronicle because it is... Oh! No way, it retains its charges. Oh, okay, that's fine then. So if we die, we lose our Chronicle, we just have to buy it back for 300. Um, and yeah, like I said before, we'll just scoot down, go kill big frogs and bury their bones, 
Um, and then once we've done that, maybe our combat's high enough to go take on a quest. I want to do something like Witcher's House. Obviously so far I've been complaining that our HP is disproportionately low to our attack and strength, which is true. Witcher's House famously awards you a bunch of HP XP, uh, and then we should be in a better position to fight things that are actually difficult, and maybe die a little bit less to level 35 NPCs who hit fives. Let's just find ourselves a nice little spot where we can hit the frogs and they can't hit us. Yeah, that's ideal. So I'll just chill here guys, use these 400 casts. We're leaving off on 20 hit points and 31 mage, 17 prayer. Our first longbone on the account from a frog. I feel like we need to do like three plus quests before we can turn that in, so it may be that we lose it or end up burying it or something, but we'll hang on to it for now. Okay, there we go. That's all our runes used up on frogs, just bury all the bones real quick. Did get a beginner clue, but honestly I'm just going to drop it straight away, even if it's doable. Really the best thing we can get from a beginner clue is like a trimmed defense army or some monk robes or something stupid, so. A uh, quick stats check after that. 23 health now, 35 magic, and 19 prayer. Um, so yeah, mage-wise we got ourselves telegrab, lumbridge tele, and I guess firebolt if we ever find some chaos runes. So what we'll do, like I said earlier, just get an inventory of regular planks, uh, then we'll do one teleport to house, just see if we get a level or two off an invent of normal planks and nails. And I think once we hit 19 we can start making oak chairs, uh, which means we'll no longer need to take nails with us. So what we'll do with these draman branches is we'll keep one for Fremenic trials. Um, we will have the ability to fletch a Draman staff inside the fight with that guy in the basement, um, which gives us a lot more melee damage when fighting him, so that's nice. Okay, that's lovely, that's all our planks. Did just push us over 18. Uh, I think we'll chronicle back, do the same thing again, hopefully get us to 19. That's great. That's level 19 coming in, we can now make oak chairs. Obviously we will try use up our uh, regular planks as well. But now next trip we can do oak logs instead. I think what we'll do this time is just instead of chronicling, we will just lumbridge home telly. We'll go to Bob's and we'll grab a steel axe just to make this a bit quicker. Here he is, let's see what he'll give us for this old one. Nine coins, let's go. Uh, we'll grab one of his steels. Um, so yeah, two more inventories just to use up these house tellies. Get as much construction XP out of those as possible and uh, get the inventory space back. And uh, we're back. Just remove all these scrappy chairs and replace them with nice ones while we're here <laughs> for the uh, guests that will never be entertaining because it's not possible. Um, so yeah, we used all our house tellies um, and those leftover planks we had from Daddy's home. Just got our construction all the way up to 23. Um, we've already got the kitchen, which is nice. I guess the next thing would be the tool store too, which is at 25. Uh, that'll just let us get things like buckets and knives and whatever from our house if we ever need to. So that's that out of the way. Uh, that's uh, about half the cash stack we had at the start of the episode gone, just on runes and planks. But that's good, like I say, it's just reinvesting it back into the account. Right, next thing. Um, just while we're semi-close to Draenor Village, we are going to pick up the Vampire Slayer quest. As far as I know, you can kill him with magic. So what what we'll do is just while we're passing the magic store here, just grab some basic combat runes, probably enough for fire strike as usual. Then what we'll do is we'll teleport over to the monastery using our cape just to get our prayer back and uh, grab a few cakes from Ardy to use as food for this quest just in case. So just head upstairs in this dude's house, grab the garlic that he keeps up here. Uh, next thing we need is to go to Varrock, so what we'll do is we'll go monastery first. That should be more than enough cakes, right? Use our trusty chronicle. Telly over to Varrock, this is such a good purchase on any account. Saves you a whole bunch of time chopping down the canoe and sailing up here. Plus allows us to uh, Telly here, even if our home teleport cooldown is on cooldown, so that's really, really nice. So let's get this guy drunk, and he'll tell us how to defeat a vampire. So I guess we can get a beer from the bartender, that would only make sense, wouldn't it? There we go, that's literally everything you have to do. Uh, all we need to do now is go back to Draenor Manor and do the quest. I'm hoping we have this agility shortcut here. Oh, we do, level 31, awesome. Uh, I seem to remember you can kill this guy with magic, that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, thinking about it, while we're here we might as well pick up Ernest the Chicken on the way in. Uh, the whole quest takes place inside Draenor Manor, and we're going in Draenor Manor anyway. So I think what we will actually do, just start Ernest the Chicken, swap our quest helper over to that and just do it, as we're doing Vampire Slayer. Two birds, one stone, one of the birds being Ernest himself. That's not funny. <laughs> so yeah, just set our quest helper to Ernest the Chicken, just going to do that first. Um, up until the stage where we need to leave the manor, uh, just because it makes the most sense to have that active while running through here anyway to kill Count Draenor. Okay, so we've got ourselves the poison fish food to kill the piranhas for Ernest the Chicken. Just on the way around we're going to scoot down these stairs, open this coffin, and fight the evil Count Draenor. It's morbid time. It's nice and weak because we're carrying some garlic. 
Hopefully we don't have to use the stake on him. There we go. Super, super easy quest, Vampire Slayer. Famously one you can do nice and early for some good attack XP. It's a lot quicker than training. And since we've started Ernest the Chicken, we will just finish it, because we are here. I will just poison these piranhas. Search the fountain. Once again, we don't get very much for doing Ernest the Chicken. You do get 300 coins and a couple of quest points. But ultimately, we're doing it because we're already here, and it will unlock further quests down the line, like Animal Magnetism. Let's go through here, head down into the basement. There we go, got the stupid oil can. <laughs> Even with Quest Helper, it takes a long time just to walk around the room. But as far as I know, I think that's everything. Turn in the quest items to Rick Sanchez over here. Oh jeez, Rick! You turned me into a chicken! Shut up, Ernest! Transforms Ernest back. There we go. 300 coins. Uh, what we're really quickly going to do, I'm just going to grab the Khazard armor um, from the chest near the monastery. Okay, we're back again. Fatty's here to stuff his face. <laughs> So we'll just go top up on mind and fire runes, and probably buy just a handful of chaos runes, and then we'll shoot up to Witcher's house. Man, 10k. Let's do it. Just for the good of the quest. So we've got 100 casts of Fire Bolt, a level 35 magic attack. So hopefully that hits a lot more than the level 13 fire strike we've been using. Just dash over to Draenor once again. Just grab the cheese spawn from Aggie's house. Uh, we'll just grab two, because you can mess up the cheese portion of the quest if you're not quick enough. Right, that's our cheese. We'll just make the long run all the way up to Witch's house. Sometimes you just have to stop and appreciate. I mean, I'm not dissing, don't get me wrong, but... The gear is looking tight. Okay, here we are at the Witch's house. This little boy's lost his ball. I guess he's kicked it over the fence and we need to go get it back. So what we need is to get one inventory space so we can get the key under the potted plant. Then we go straight down to the basement, yeah. Probably drop the key now, really. Uh, get some gloves out of one of these boxes somewhere. There we go, pop those on. We actually didn't have any gloves, so we'll just keep those on, that's cool. Open the gate, search the cupboard, grab ourselves a cheeky magnet. So we're going to go bait a mouse out of a hole. And then when he comes out, we're going to use the magnet on him, because I think he's eaten a key or something like that. Right click, use cheese on hole. Use magnet mouse. That opens the door. Then all we have to do is just stay on this path out of sight of the witch. Really easy. Check the fountain, there's a key. Once again, wait for the witch to pass. The switch I run on and we should be able to make it all the way to the end now. We'll just hope for the best. Let's attack this fella, he's really low level. So we'll just fight like the first two forms with the rubbish magic spell. If we can get this form down then we can eat in between its forms. There we go. Now this is a level 53 wolf. Um, should be interesting to see if this counts as a slayer kill for our wolf task. Um, it probably won't, but uh be interesting because it is technically a wolf, I guess. Because we can't just stand over here, can we? Oh wow. <laughs> no way, I've never done that before. That's great. So this is the final enemy, then we just grab the ball. Don't mess up in the maze, otherwise we have to do this all again. Just turn it into the crying child, and hopefully this should give us a couple of HP levels, because that's why we're here. Just boosting this HP up so we can go take on Taurus Trap a little bit safer. There we go, 6,000 hit points for uh, really just a couple of minutes work. Uh, it's pushed us all the way up to 29, I think we were just, what, 23 or something? And only 300 XP off being 30 health, so probably just go hit a few things, get that over the 30 mark. Uh, speaking of hitting things, what we will go kill, while we have some casts left and all our mage gear on us, we'll just head over to the ZMI, the whatever it is, Zamorak Magic Institute or whatever, just down this hole over here. Um, let's see if we can kill a few Zamorak warriors with the runes that we're carrying on us still. Famously, we have a 1 in 50 drop for a rune scimitar, which is relatively common. On the way, just killing these Zami monks, um, just because they drop a monk top and a monk bottom that they're wearing. Um, it's an armor piece that has a tiny bit of prayer bonus and a tiny bit of magic bonus. And we're wearing this garbage iron from the Khazard quest, which doesn't really do much for us apart from a bit of defense. And uh, obviously the pink skirt bottom has absolutely no stats whatsoever, so <laughs> if we can replace both of these with actual magic robes... Uh, oh, there's the first one. Um, then that is obviously a really nice upgrade. Uh, no luck on the robe bottom from here. Um, we will just wear the top. Worry about the bottom a little later. Here's our warrior. So what you need to be really be careful of is making sure to get in behind the safe spot properly. Here are the drops for the Zami warriors on screen, as you can see. A number of different weapons. Um, they also drop cooked lobsters and 100 coins. So all the drops from this guy are really, really good. Okay, we'll swap back to our chaos spell. Donk a few of these guys just until we run out of all our runes. Even if we go dry here or we get unlucky, we are still getting some really nice magic XP because these guys have no defense. Okay, that's the last of our chaos runes, sadly. Probably just kill this guy, I guess. Okay, that's about all we have the runes for. Let's grab the coins for the sake of it. Just a quick stats check. Um, 36 mage off that. 
30 HP. With this magic level and our 30 HP, grab ourselves some runes and we'll just go attempt Taurus Trap. So we do have all the requirements, so all we need to do, home teleport. What we can do is replace our pink skirt with a desert robe. Desert robe will help us uh, against the desert heat, so functionally that's better. Uh, we'll grab ourselves two water skins, a knife to refill them. This guy has some feather packs. You need 50, but we'll just buy a pack of 100. You need three bronze bars. This is one to three. I'll grab them now. Okay, we'll attempt to bring everything that we can. So we'll begin the quest. And then the guy we actually have to fight is the very first objective. So once we've killed him, we don't actually need to do any combat in theory. Obviously the uh, camels and stuff in the desert might just decide to attack us because we're a low level anyway. Just have to hope this guy doesn't hit too hard or have too much HP. Okay, he's ready to fight. Hopefully we can find a nice flinching range. Wait, what? Hello? What is happening right now? What just happened? <laughs> so I guess um, we can't stop attacking him. We have to just stand next to him and rage him, otherwise the quest's gonna give us some weird dialogue. It's a shame, I did want to walk away like the guy from Tree Gnome Village and just kind of mage him at a distance, just so we wouldn't get hit at all. But it does seem like he only hits like ones and fives, so sadly we just gotta stand here and take it while we eat cakes. There we go, he's dead, we've got his key. Right, unequip all combat gear and enter the camp. See, this is why you need to do this quest with a number of free invent space. Oh, we needed to bring the full desert gear, right, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to leg it back to the shanty pass, uh, buy the hammer that we need and the full desert set, because I didn't check properly. We're dropping the runes, dropping the uh, steel axe and the leather gloves, don't need those immediately so they're gone. Just going to buy a full set of desert gear and one more water skin just because. Oh, I forgot the hammer, one sec. Then we trade with one of the slaves in here. Give him a full set of desert robes so he can sneak out, and so we can then disguise as one of the slaves. We can dress like the raggedy urchin that we truly are, and we can enter the mine. Ultimately everything we're doing here is to rescue someone's daughter who's been stolen away into this mine. Interesting that we care about her and not any of these other slaves, but obviously she's offering us an XP reward, these guys giving us nothing so they can rot. So next we need to go find the dude's pineapple. We have to unequip our slave clothes so it doesn't look like we're a slave that's just escaping. Once again makes you wonder why the other slaves don't just try the exact same thing. So we talk to the leader of this nearby Bedabin tribe, ask him about locating the dude's favourite pineapple. He says he can get us one if we help him with something. So now we need to go back into the camp, do a favour for this dude. We just look at our inventory really quick, it's absolutely full of garbage. This is one of those quests where you do need quite a lot of space just because you do need to unequip everything. So obviously every single piece of gear that you currently have, you need to be able to take off and put in your bag. So of course that's why we wanted to do this quest relatively early. Of course the other reason we do this quest now is because we get two lots of 4000 XP as a reward. Not quite sure which skill to put them in, um, you're limited to a choice of four. I guess we'll just decide at the end of the quest. First of all we're just going to nip into the guard captain's house and loot his box. He has some blueprints for darts that we need to uh, take back to the pineapple guy. So we brought this guy his secret blueprints just to make an invent space but we'll just equip some of our stuff again because we're free to wear what we like over here. We're going to go inside and learn how to make darts. You can technically fail, uh, but just really hope we don't fail more than three times. There we go, we made one dart tip. So we bring the dart and the plans back to our boy here. He should give us the pineapple that we were doing this whole thing for. There it is. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we'll use the technique to be able to smith darts until way later when we have a blowpipe. Really no use throwing darts as a weapon, they are terrible. Making darts is decent fleshing XP though. Obviously you can turn a whole bunch of bars into uh, a stack of darts that'll only take one inventory slot, and then you can attach stackable feathers to those. So maybe we'll make some darts just to train with, but we probably won't make any darts to use. Okay, he's had his pineapple. So he'll let us sneak through. Now we've done all our busy work, we're back on our rescue mission. Here she is, the lovely Anna, who we're here to rescue. So what we do is we use the barrel on her, and we just stick her in a barrel. And then I guess the barrel's in our pocket or something? Nobody notices us with a human-sized barrel. <laughs> so we've winched Anna up, we'll just pop her in the back of this cart. There we go, now we'll just talk to the driver, go through a really, really long conversation, and just uh, convince him to smuggle the two of us out of here. Now we're out of the camp, we can just re-equip all our stuff. And instead of letting the girl out of the barrel, we'll just carry her the whole way. Again, don't think about it. She gives us the key in order to get back in there. Hopefully we can come back to her and uh, claim that whenever. Okay, decision time for the XP. If we put it all into agility, we should get to 37. 
I mean, smithing's probably going to be harder to train on the account, ultimately. So let's put one into smithing. And got us three levels. Uh, second one, just going to throw into agility. Just get us straight to 35. Which actually unlocks the barb course, which is cool. New course. There we go. Quest complete. Uh, can drop the junk. Not going to hang on to the keys because I've no plan to come back here anytime soon. Okay, next thing. Just because we're here, grab a bucket of water from Shanty's shop. Um, what we're just going to do, just because we're in the neighbourhood, once again, uh, we're going to unlock the new Runecraft minigame. Um, the quest Temple of the Eye is just here in Alcarid, which is where we are. All you need for it is a bucket of water, a chisel and a pickaxe. And the pickaxe and chisel you get during the quest. So really, all we need to bring is this bucket of water. Um, the other prereqs are uh, Enter the Abyss and Rune Mysteries, which we did in previous episodes. Um, but yeah, we'll just fire up here and start uh, Temple of the Eye and complete it, because you get an absolute ton of Runecraft XP from this. It's something like 9k or something crazy. Um, so that'll give us a bunch of levels. Because so we've only got 2k XP now, so I think it puts you out at something like 25 or something. And obviously it unlocks the minigame itself, which will be super useful when we actually decide to do some. Oh, the quest helper doesn't exist yet, that's fine. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. So we get given an amulet. We need to take this to Varrock, to the lovely Enter the Abyss guy. Um, at the end of this quest, you are awarded with the medium pouch. Obviously, we're going to destroy that straight away, like we did with the small pouch we got for Enter the Abyss. So in here, we find our boy. Blends in with the environment, but there he is hiding behind a pillow. He's a little bit socially awkward. Shame we can't keep this amulet. You can get an amulet that looks the same as this from the minigame that acts as a teleport um, inside the wizard's tower. Could be super useful because we've made quite a few trips over there, and we'll probably make quite a few more for various reasons. So it'd be nice to have that teleport. So for whatever reason, we bring this dude a cup of tea. Not a normal one, a special quest one. Just so it'll send us through to the abyss. And we basically play Simon Says. So it's yellow first. If you just type it in chat, then uh, you can help yourself remember. Yellow, grey, blue. 50-50 chance. Red, green, lovely. He gives us this silly note. Go back to Wizard Purston, who is obviously in Alcarid. Easiest way for that is the home telly. Sure, at some stage we'll complete Prince Ali Rescue to make the gate free. <laughs> but it's only 10 coins, so I'm not really in a rush. I just seem to remember that quest taking quite a while and needing quite a few items and just to save 10 GP per passage, so we'll leave that till we feel like it, till we've got some free time. Right, talk to Cedridor. Uh, so from this section on, it basically becomes just a tutorial of how to play the mini game. Maybe we'll play a game um, just to see what kind of points per game we can achieve at this runecraft level. Um, we'll only be able to make the really low level runes. So we need to run around the room, just talk to everybody. And obviously in uh, true modern RuneScape quest fashion, there's a bunch of unskippable dialogues. So basically, for those of you not in the know, the way this minigame works, you grab these cells. They get charged when you go through these rifts in the middle by visiting each of the runecraft altars and making runes. In crafting the runes, you also make this uh, runic energy that you feed this guardian in the center to power him up. And in exchange, he fights off the abyssals that come through here. Basically, you runecraft in order to create defences for this room. And obviously, in the meantime, you come out with some runes for yourself. So it's really a win-win scenario. Yeah, you can definitely mine this essence quicker with a better pickaxe. Uh, but since we're just going to play one game today, I'm not going to leave, go all the way to Falador, buy a better pick, um, and then come back to do one game. We'll just do a game with the bronze pick. Oh my god, I'm so bored. Can this be over yet? <laughs> there it is. Hopefully with that cutscene, we're finally done with this. There we go, that's the Temple of the Eye complete. Access to the Runecraft minigame. Another ridiculous 5,000 Runecraft XP. So we crafted air runes once on this account and we're level 28, which is just stupid. Uh, we can actually craft our own cosmics now. Um, we have done Lost City, so that's really, really helpful if we ever need cosmics. Uh, but yeah, just immediately get rid of this medium pouch because we're not going to use that. I will hang on to the runes because we're going to get some more in a minute when we go back in. I'll ditch all the tools we certainly don't need just to have the absolute most inventory space possible. So yeah, we'll just uh, hop to one of the official worlds and we'll play a proper game of this uh, and just see what we come out with on the rewards column here. I do like this minigame. Uh, the only gripes I have are with how long it takes to get into a game. It's a long time you have to wait. Additionally, I think the Runecraft outfit you earn with pearls from the shop here, I think it's a little bit too slow. If, if the outfit's the only thing you're here for, it, I feel like it does take a bit too long. But yeah, I'm well aware I definitely should have brought a better pickaxe, but like I say, we're just playing one game just to see how it goes. So what we do, grab ourselves a handful of cells, run over here, hopefully there's no weird mining level requirement to mine the large essence. All right, okay. We don't have the agility level to use the good essence mine, so that's good to know. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just start over here at the rubbish essence mine with all these noobs. I really hope this guy's level 121 doesn't have less than 56 agility, that would be very sad. So we'll just do our best. I don't know how this works if you have a lower level than 
some of the rifts require. I guess you can't go in and use them. I guess because of the quest requirements and the quest reward to get in here, um, there is a minimum level that you could be to actually access this game. So I guess ultimately you must be able to make all the basic elemental rune types in order to be able to play this. Um, you'll always be able to go into the elemental one, even if you don't have the level for the, the open catalytic one. But what we will be doing is we will be prioritizing the cosmic altar whenever that's open, because that's our highest level rune, so it'll award us the best XP. And then when that's not open, we'll just use whichever elemental thing is open and just do that instead. Just for reference, on a max character at this point, I'd have probably 150 of these essence shards, as opposed to the 20 we have on this character. We'll just craft enough to fill our entire invent, and it's fire runes and mind runes, so we'll go into the fire rune altar. There we go, get ourselves a little bit of XP and 18 fire runes. Then we go back to mining. There is a portal, I'm not sure if we're able to use this, I guess we'll try. Seems like we can in fact get in here. Every now and again these portals open and they take you to this very special golem, and at these special golems you mine pre-crafted essence in a larger number, so it's a lot quicker to fill your invent. So the blood rune thing's open, we certainly can't make blood runes, we're a long way from that. So we'll just run over to the air one. If you guys are wondering if you played this before and you're seeing things on my screen that you don't normally see, I do have a plugin. I think it's just called Guardians of the Rift. If you go into your plugin hub and just turn that on, it will uh, highlight things for you in here, make things a little bit clearer. If you do play this yourself, I also recommend using the Entity Hider plugin. You can toggle off other players. Sometimes helpful if you're getting a low frame rate or you want to be able to actually see what you're doing. Maybe we do actually come out of here with some points. I guess it's only a quarter of the way through the game now, but uh, we've not quite earned one point yet. <laughs> So how the loot works after this, um, it rolls off your points you earned inside. You have both an elemental score and a catalytic score, based on the type of runes you decide to make. Every 100 points you earn gives you one loot roll. You need one point in each to claim one loot roll. So you need to kind of keep your points balanced in a way. If you come out of the game with a fraction of a point, i.e. here we've got 0.75, then that would mean we'd have 75% chance of earning one reward point. So what I will try and do is just make catalytic runes to push that over one point something, just so we definitely get one point in each type, and then we'll definitely be able to claim some rewards. Tons of runes on the floor. It'd be nice to be able to pick those up, but obviously we can't as an Iron Man. But if you want my advice for this minigame, please don't come in with a bronze pick. <laughs> please level up a bit, go buy a proper pick before you come in. I think as soon as it hits 90%, we'll stop mining, we'll craft whatever we have left, and we'll just hop through whichever altar that's open. We'll just turn these in, it's very close to the end of the game, so we won't attempt to mine anymore, because we just won't be able to in time. There we go, 1300 Runecraft XP for that game, pushing us all the way up to 30, which is just stupid. And then what we'll do is we'll claim our reward. We can have exactly one reward, so hopefully it's something good. Here we go. I got a book and a water talisman. That's not actually that terrible. Um, I do need a water talisman to do the Lumbridge Easy Diary. But yeah, that's that. Um, we got a few runes. It did take about 15 minutes to uh, get into and play one full game. Really got a low score. Our skills are quite low and we brought a terrible pick, so no big deal. Um, we'll drop the chisel, don't need that anymore. I am quite happy about the water talisman though. What we'll do is we'll just immediately go out. We'll teleport with Archmage Cedridor. This is super, super helpful. We'll mine this rune essence here. And then we'll just nip straight outside the wizard's tower, enter the water altar with our new water talisman, and just craft all these into water runes, because that is necessary for the Lumbridge Easy Diary. Um, and then maybe we'll have a look at the other things we need to do for that. Um, the water altar is right here, right next to where we are. So let's just head inside, craft a bunch of runes. Lovely, there's a task. Um, it would be really good to get the Lumbridge Diary done. It awards you a ring. What the ring does for you is it gives you two run energy recharges per day, giving you 50% of your run back. Plus it lets you cast alchemy on some items. Uh, it'll start off only as low alk. The reason I tell you over here, obviously, is to grab a famous lit candle from the monastery. And I'm just going to dash over real quick to the fishing platform and grab a rope. Now if we just have a look what it is we actually need to do. Talk to her hands in Lumbridge, chop and burn an oak log in Lumbridge, bake some bread in Lumbridge, then mine an iron ore in Alcarid, catch an anchovy in Alcarid, and kill a cave bug beneath the swamp. We'll do the cave bug first. Okay, here's our rope. Probably could have picked this up from a shop, but I just know where this one is already, so. Uh, so while we are over here, we'll just hit up the fishing shop next to us, because the dude in here should have, yeah, a nice net for us. Lovely. So now all we should need is, uh, I think, a tinderbox and an axe. And then obviously we will need to make some flour in order to make some bread. So just like we did in the previous episode, we'll grab the bowl and the pot. Okay, there's our flour. Let's whip up two bread dough. So we need to make our bread on the Lumbridge kitchen range specifically, i.e. the one we unlocked after Cook's Assistant, so we'll go do that first. There we go, success, success. Just run past our lovely friends, the frogs, again. Oh, let's just hope for the best. We just need to kill a cave bug. There's some here. I don't know why it's prompting us to go kill some over there. All we need to do is kill one before our candle goes out. 
Is that it? Lovely. Let's try and run out before we die. Just hit up the homie Bob once again. Uh, I guess we'll just grab the steel. Right, let's hit up the general store, grab our tinderbox. Super strange to have not have done something <laughs> as simple as burn an oak log in Lumbridge already by accident, but I guess we haven't. Uh, while we are passing, I will just claim the free range stuff. Might not even use those, might end up destroying them um, before we get to actually shooting anything, but... I just figured since we're in the neighbourhood now, range is still one, we can just freely claim those. Still the only XP we've got is the three damage we did to a route on Tutorial Island. So it comes to the Alcarid Mine, just gonna get one iron ore from here, just for the diary. And I think the last thing left is just go south of the bank, fish one anchovy, which you just need a small net and over 15 fishing. Obviously we're on 28, so that's easy. One thing I would like to do relatively early game is do the Dorgashan quest line. You do need goblin diplomacy for those, so we'll do that um, at some point soon. Maybe this episode, maybe next time. Um, just because if you do those Dorgashan quests, you do get some ranged XP, and also you unlock the ability to buy and use the bone crossbow. So that'll probably be our best training weapon. For now though, we're back in Lumbridge just to turn in our easy diary. Gonna get ourselves the excellent Explorer's Ring 1, plus another XP lamp. Here we go, here's our ring. Lovely stuff. So like I say, every day we get 30 casts of low alchemy. Doesn't give us any XP, but it does give us the gold, so that's great. And every day we get two uses of the energy recharge function to give us 50 energy back. Just to run about a little bit easier. So what I'm thinking next is we're going to start the recipe for disaster quest line. So one of the items we need is some ashes, so I've just lit a fire here. Just going to use our training arrows to shoot some ducks just while this fire burns down into ash. There we go, our fire's burned down, grab the ash. What I'm going to do is revisit Betty's Magic Emporium over in Portsarim. Grab ourselves an Eye of Newt for this quest. Then we're going to tally over to the Ardy area, run down to Yanil. We'll just nip in the pub, grab a Greenman's Ale. Also while we're down there we can grab the rotten tomato we need. And then finally we'll spirit tree up to the Grand Tree, head over to the cocktail shop and buy a fruit blast. Then all of those disgusting things I guess the cook mixes together to make some kind of cocktail, and that'll start the recipe for disaster quest. Maybe that is the titular disastrous recipe, I'm not sure. So there's our eye. While we're running, we will use today's energy recharge. As you can see, our energy just went up by 50. Certainly better to use them rather than try and save them for a rainy day and not end up using them. Okay, here we are, Yanel. Should be able to just buy a rotten tomato from this crate. That's great. Here's the Mage's Guild or Wizard's Guild or whatever it's called. We'll certainly be back here a lot after 66 Mage uh, when you can go inside. They sell magic armor and they sell all the good kinds of runes. So it's a really good place to go. And here we are at the pub. Just need to buy ourselves a Greenman's Ale from the bartender. Cheers, buddy. Then it's quickest to Monastery Tally back up. So we can scoot over here, trade the barman, grab our cocktail. The one we want is the pre-made Fruit Blast. So that's that one, right? Or do you have to make your own? Surely not. Oh, I have to make my own. Dude. Okay, we need to make some invent space. Um, there we go. I'm not sure if we can use this fruit blast. You know what? Forget the cocktail training, dude. I'm keeping this fruit blast for myself. See you later. Okay, back in Lumbridge. Just go turn this in and then we can properly start the RFD subquests. Not checked which ones we're capable of. Certainly should be able to do the dwarf one where you make the rock cake, because we have done fishing contest. Cool, that's the start of RFD, so we'll just dash through the door, and that should activate this room of Lumbridge Castle to start the actual quest for real. It's always nice to start Recipe for Disaster and complete at least one of the subquests. Once you've done that, then uh, a secret chest opens underneath Lumbridge Castle and it turns into a food store where you can buy food. Anytime we need particular cooking ingredients like a chocolate bar or pot of flour or egg or milk or something, then we can just home telly and buy some instead of seeking them out around the world. Uh, it might be worth doing the Goblin Chief subquest for RFD just because we need to do Goblin Diplomacy anyway um, in order to do the Dorgashan quest. Right, here we are. Um, I think the only subquest we can actually do is the dwarf one um, with the quests and skills that we have. That is a shame because a lot of the things we need to do the dwarf one we could just buy if we'd done a different mini quest already. So what we're actually going to do, big brain scheme, uh, let's get rid of some trash first. I guess with the XP lamp we could put it into runecraft just because that is now 30. Um, so just to get rid of that diary lamp, we pop it in Runecraft, get ourselves from 30 to 32, really nice. Uh, what we actually do need to do now, we're going to do Goblin Diplomacy first. Just going to check what we also need for the RFD quest after. Uh, I'm going to grab the bucket from here near the monastery, turn it into a bucket of water by just using On the Well next to it. 
Then real quick, we're just gonna run over here, grab the purple die that spawns just next to the spirit tree next to us. So our goal right now is to just do goblin diplomacy and the goblin diplomacy subquest of RFD, um, freeing the goblin generals it's called. So what I'm gonna do is just run around, grab all the items I need for both those quests, and then just really quickly do both of them at once. Uh, we need to grab ourselves a bread, so I'm coming to the cake stall for that. Uh, then we need some spice. Hopefully we can just buy it. Yeah, lovely, we can just buy it from this dude. Uh, then we'll buy a bread from this guy. We will need a charcoal, and we will need an orange, and we'll need a fishing bait. So for the charcoal and the orange, we're going to head over to Karamja, just because the trader crew members on the dock there will be able to sell us an orange. And then we'll just be able to dash south to the Shiloh Village General Store and just get ourselves a, a charcoal from there. Sorry, it's not the Shiloh Village shop, is it? It's uh, the Taibo one Eye shop. Uh, one charcoal from this fella. We'll just dash back, grab the orange. Let's grab an orange from this trader crew member. What I do want to see is how much it's going to cost us just to go up to Cathabi. 480, that's a bargain. For now I will just drop this water talisman, it's uh, outlived its usefulness. We'll also ditch our body runes because we're certainly not going to use those. We'll just talk to Big Harry here. <laughs> grab uh, five fishing bait just in case one isn't enough for whatever reason. So that's everything we need for freeing the goblin generals. Now we actually have to just get all the stuff and do goblin diplomacy. So we'll chronicle back to the Varrock area. What we need is some red berries. Just from here outside Varrock because we need to make a red dye. That's great, that's the red berries. Now we just need to run all the way over to Falador. Then when we have our dyes together, we can head to Goblin Village, use them to help the Goblin Generals decide on a new colour for their armour. And then when that quest's out of the way, we already have all the items together to do saving the Goblin Generals, recipe for disaster. And of course, completing that will unlock us the first layer of the shop under Lumbridge to buy all sorts of food, cooking ingredients from. Uh, if we do that first, then we can buy a bunch of the stuff we need for the saving the dwarf RFD mini quest from under there. So we don't need to go around and manually find those, so that's going to be really helpful as well. Yes please, I'd like some woad leaves. Uh, I'll give you 20 coins, pal. And he's like, sweet, here's two. Uh, we just need to grab ourselves a few onions, so we can take those two drain all with us. Obviously the onions will be turned into yellow dye, the red breeze will be turned into red dye. Mix those together and make an orange dye for the quest. Then we'll turn these flowers into blue dye. We'll become the goblin gokwan. So we only need two onions from here. Just grab them from the same place we did just before Corsair Curse earlier on. And that should be it, all the fruits and vegetables we need. Here's the lovely witch Aggie. Please can you make me some dye? <laughs> I love her magic spell when she makes dye, it looks great. Look at this. That's excellent, they put that much effort in. Right, and then we'll just make an orange dye by combining these two. The lovely scenic goblin village. Just run around and grab a few goblin males from some different crates around the town. Then it's literally just a case of going through a few cutscenes. You do get a minuscule amount of crafting XP for this quest, like 200. Uh, you also get a gold bar, which I mean I guess is something. You know, if we had a gem, we could make some kind of jewellery and use our cosmics to enchant it, so maybe we'll hang on to that. So we'll get this little guy to just model all our uh, different goblin clothes for us. I actually really like the blue one, it looks good, but <laughs> I guess these guys don't, so... There we go. Super, super quick quest once you already have the items out of the way. Uh, and now we're safe to teleport back to Lumbridge and just pick up the goblin portion of Recipe for Disaster. We can inspect these guys in here, start their little sub-quest. Talk to the goblin cook in Goblin Village, right. This time we will minigame teleport to Berthorpe because we're definitely further away. Uh, actually, while we're here, I just want to see what this guy sells. Oh, that's Garnian Ales, really. I think we need some of those for uh, the dwarf quest, if I'm not mistaken. So we're back in the village, we'll just talk to the goblin chef. I do like this animation here, it's quite funny. <laughs> it's very Looney Tunes or whatever. Uh, but yeah, he should um, tell us how to make this slop now. Just need to be careful when crafting this, because you can do a couple of things wrong. Uh, for example, you could accidentally chop your orange into the wrong thing, or you could eat your bread instead of chopping it into breadcrumbs or whatever it is you're supposed to do, so just got to really carefully read the quest for this one. So we make some wet bread, we make some purple oranges, we make some spicy fishing bait, and then with all that absolutely disgusting garbage we talk to him, and he should just combine it together. Will it blend? That is the question. And then we just go back, just use the slop on the goblin, and that'll be quest complete, or mini quest complete rather. There we go, 1000 farming XP for that, wow! What's that going to put us on? Because we didn't have any farming XP up until that point. 
all the way to level nine, no way. And obviously a little bit of crafting and a little bit of cooking. Cooking always helps. Um, you need an ever-increasing cooking level to take on each of these mini quests, so that's really good. Uh, let's just start the dwarf one then while we're here. Hopefully if we go next door now, into the chef's room and climb down the trap door, we should have the food shop here, which we do it seems. So with access to this shop, this is why we did this in order, uh, we can now take on the Recipe for Disaster Dwarf mini quest. Um, so for this we basically need to make him a weird kind of cake. So we need all the normal cake ingredients, uh, and instead of getting them the, tr the traditional way, we can just get them here. What I do need is a fourth beer, which is kind of annoying. Sort of wish I checked when I was buying them. I thought three would be enough, more than enough, but it is four. We are going to have to go to Falador anyway. Both our minigame and home telly are on cooldown, so we actually don't have any other options. <laughs> Um, while we don't have access to lore runes. I will just really quickly detour up to Edgeville here, um, just because those leather gloves are on the ground next to the bank. So we need to just go pick those up, just so we can handle the rock cake later in the quest. Okay, there's our leather gloves just from the Edgeville bank. What I really quickly want to do is just check what we need for Skippy and the Mogas. Um, it's a mini quest that takes place over in Rimmington. Just thinking about it, because we do need nettles for that quest, and we are here at the spawn of nettles. I think what we'll do is just grab two nettles if possible. Um, but to start it, we need to make a hangover cure, just like we did back in Plague City. It's the same idea, uh, except you also need a nettle tea. So we grab some nettles just while we're up there near the nettle spawn. If we don't get around to doing the quest, I'll happily drop them, but it's just one of those things thinking, hey, while I'm in the neighbourhood, might as well pick these up just in case. Just real quick while we're in the bar here, just grab that extra Asgarnian Ale because we didn't bring enough. So we add coins to the Asgarnian Ale to make four Asgoldian Ales. Not sure if that's supposed to be a pun, but it barely is. So now armed with our knowledge of new Dwarven beers with coins in the bottom, we'll scoot up to the Dwarven Tunnel we unlocked uh, when we did the fishing contest quest the other day. Using these ales we'll convince an old dwarf inside to make us a nice cake, and then we'll use that cake to rescue the dwarf back in the Lumbridge Castle. It's a nice chill quest, it actually gives us a thousand Slayer experience for whatever reason, so that's going to almost double our Slayer XP because we haven't really done any proper Slayer yet. So that should push us up a couple of levels, I'm predicting maybe 14, 15. Also a thousand cooking XP which is always welcome. Obviously in future I think the best way to train cooking is going to come with either unlocking further access to the Cullen Romancer's chest, hopping worlds and making wines, um, or if that's not really feasible we'll just do Temperos. It awards noted raw fish, so we can just unnote those on a bank near a cooking fire and it should be a relatively efficient way of training cooking. So we keep talking to Rohak here. Once he's got a few beers in him, he's a little bit more agreeable, and he agrees to make us a nice cake. Just need to give him 100 coins and the ingredients. There he goes, one rock cake. And then what we need to do with this is just take it over to Edgeville. Just cool it down by killing an ice fiend. Right, here we are, on Ice Mountain. There we go, with its dying breath, it cools our cake down. Of course, after this quest, we do have the ability to go back to the dwarf guy and uh, get more rock cakes. Uh, useful if you ever need to lower your HP for whatever reason. Right, and there it is, saving the mountain dwarf. Uh, gives us a thousand cooking XP, a thousand slayer. Cooking up to 24, slayer 14 from 10. So we've still not really done much slayer. We've done two very newbie tasks. We killed some cows and some spiders in Lumbridge. And we've got to 14, so that's really good. Just going to quickly run down here and just see what we have available from this chest now that we've done two mini quests. Every mini quest you do obviously increases the stock down here. Um, so now there's three of everything available. And then we should be able to buy some gloves. We can buy up to iron. They do have plus three in everything for all styles. Obviously mage just plus two. So yeah, that's really helpful. Okay guys, and with our first pair of Recipe for Disaster gloves there, I think this is a great place to end this episode off. Absolutely jam-packed one again. Just to recap what we did, we did Murder Mystery for the Crafting XP, then we completed Lost City, just about. Um, then we did our first Easy Clue, obviously it was terrible. Then we went on to do the Daddy's Home mini quest, and a cheeky bit of construction training just using the supplies from that. Then we did the Corsair Curse quest, of course tried to mage those ogresses, didn't go very well, but we did get ourselves some nice cosmic runes, so that's always nice. Um, so we did some combat training over on Frogs, uh, we completed the Vampire Slayer and the Ernest the Chicken quest, so nice to get those two done at the same time. Uh, we also completed Witch's House for some more combat XP and HP. We attempted to get our rune skim, didn't work, but we did get a Zami Monk rope top, so a little bit of magic bonus there as an upgrade. Completed the Taurus trap, wasn't as hard as I was expecting, but nice to have out of the way. And then obviously we started our runecraft journey by completing the Temple of the Eye quest, and we played a cheeky game of Guardians of the Rift with our rubbish bronze pick. Didn't get too many points, but we did come out with that lovely water talisman. 
Of course that enabled us to complete the Lumbridge Easy Diary, get our Explorer's Ring 1. Hopefully should see a lot more use out of that in upcoming episodes. And then finally we made a nice dent into Recipe for Disaster. We completed the intro quest, and we completed Goblin Diplomacy, and then we completed two sub-quests of RFD, awarding us with a nice pair of iron gloves. The gear's still looking kinda scuffed, but I guess we're still in the stage where we don't want to invest too heavily into really good gear. We definitely will be attempting to get that rune skim at some point in future, but for right now we still don't really need it. Quick stats check before we leave, obviously you can see we hit 622 total, highest level still being that 56 fletching and that 60 woodcutting that we got between episodes, but we did make an absolute bunch of progress in our combats, obviously the mage up in the 30s, rune crafting in the 30s, hit 9 farming even though we've yet to plant anything, that's kind of good. And we got a few of our other skills up, just through some cheeky quest rewards, lamps, things like that. Ton more gains coming up in the next episode guys, so stay tuned if you're interested, leave a comment if you fancy, sub if you want, you know how it works. Um, thanks for checking in on uh, Bag Only.